Hello, my name is Lowell Vanderpool and this channel is dedicated to IT students, IT professionals, and anyone who enjoys learning technical subjects. Our topic will be Windows and Containers. Now, Containers is a developer, programmer... Our topic will be Windows and Containers. Now, Containers is a developer, programmer ecosystem. Now, Containers are really about a form of application virtualization. So what is a container? Well, a container is very much like that metal box we see on these large ships here. That metal box, you can put goods and items inside there, lock it up, and you can take that metal box and you can put it on a ship, you can put it on a train, you can put it on a truck, and the goods and material inside that metal box stay the same. This simple concept is what programmers wanted. They wanted a box, and they wanted to put their applications in it, and they wanted to put it on the cloud, on a server, or on a laptop, and it still ran. That's what containers are. Containers virtualize the operating system. So with containers, it allows a software developer to take his laptop, Windows 10, build an application, run and test it. He can take that container off his Windows 10 laptop, move it to a, a corporate data center, run it on their own internal servers. He can also migrate it to Azure Cloud or AWS or anything else. And that application runs just like it did on his Windows 10 laptop. All right, so let's talk for a second Windows containers, just Windows containers. Containers. There's two basic types. There's Hyper-V isolation containers, and these would be containers inside a Hyper-V environment. They provide really good isolation and security barriers, but they require more CPU, memory, and storage requirements, and they're larger in size in terms of file size. There's also a type of container for Windows called processor-based, and this has good isolation, limited security barriers, very efficient use of the operating system and hardware. Uh, you wouldn't want to use it on a multi-tenant environment, say in a cloud. It doesn't provide enough protection, but it has its advantages. So those are two kinds of Windows containers. All right, let's get into container basics. This diagram is a great way to start. You can see I've got, you see a laptop, a server, a cloud that represents any kind of hardware. Could be your data center, your laptop at home, or Azure, AWS, etc. So we don't really care about hardware. Then you have your operating system, the Docker engine, and then those, the green app one and its binary and libraries, app two, binary and libraries, app three binary and libraries. This is kind of like the container basics. So a container is an isolated lightweight container running an application on a host OS. Containers build on top of the host OS kernel. So if I'm running Windows containers, they need to see a Windows operating system. If I'm running containers built for Linux, I need to see a Linux operating system down there. Doesn't matter whether I'm on AWS or a data center or on my laptop, I need to have Linux down there. So when I build a container, Linux container, it needs to see a Linux operating system. It can have all kinds of hardware down there, but it's got to have that Linux operating system. Let's go back to this fact. Windows containers can run in Hyper-V or they can run in what is known as processor-based virtualization. They there are some advantages and disadvantages. Let's take a look at some advantages and disadvantages. Okay, I've got two physical servers. They're running Windows Server. One has Hyper-V, and each of these containers are 
isolated from each other via Hyper-V. Because I have to put an operating system inside of every container, they take up more space, I can run fewer of them on this server. With processor isolation containers, I can run a lot more containers on the same physical server. So this would be where security is not as important, isolation is not as life-threatening. Over here, security is more important, isolation between the containers is more important. You can see some of the advantages and disadvantages here. Microsoft provides a variety of images for containers. They have Windows Server Core, and it provides some server functionality, traditional .NET frameworks. It's about 1.4 gigabytes in size. Then it also provides Nano Server, which is basically .NET, that's it. 94 megabytes in size, that's amazing. And then they have a full Windows, which provides a rich set of APIs and a lot of server functionality. That's 3.5 gigabytes. They also have Windows IoT Core, which I could not find for my life the size of that image. You are not constrained to Windows. You can also download a variety of Linux, Ubuntu, Alpine, Debian, Amazon Linux. There's a lot of choices on the Linux side. Thank mm -hmm. you.